Hello YouTube. So uh, I've done a little bit of uh, work on this explosion proof ILG. Um, finally got the motor apart. I was able to get the front end bell off uh, yesterday when I got the fan, but I couldn't take the rear end bell off because these leads were actually like epoxied or something. There was some kind of material poured around the leads on this inner side here, and I was not able to, you know, pull the back end bell off because the leads were here. So I had to chip all of this material out, and then I was finally able to get these leads to slip through. And of course, I had to unscrew the uh, centrifugal switch mechanism. Um, and you can see this is the front end bell. Now, what's cool about this is you can see there's a little slot down in here. And that slot is actually what mates against this little piece that sticks out here. And I guess that's just a way of making kind of a, a seal. Um, you know, I don't know how tight that fit is. Obviously, it can't be too tight because the motor has to be able to rotate. But, uh, you know, if, if you put some oil or grease, something in there to, to make up the gap, I'm sure it does make a seal. And then we've got the bearing. There's this little flat piece that goes over top of, you know, it's an open bearing on one side. And then the inside is uh, shielded. Same with the rear. That is a shielded bearing on that side. There's a bunch of little spacers, shims here, and uh, there's actually a spring washer as well right there. Um, and then this end of this bearing is wide open. So I'm going to see if I can salvage these bearings by cleaning them out really well and repacking them with new grease. Um, and if I can't, then I'll have to order some new ones and replace them. But I'm sure cleaning them has to make them sound better than they did. Uh, but then we got the uh, centrifugal switch here. And that all seems to be functioning fine. I might clean those contacts. And uh, I'll probably put a little bit of heat shrink around at least the first little bit of these leads where they first come out of the motor uh, just to protect them a little bit and I also want to re-varnish the motor I want to spray some new varnish on it not that this looks bad but I just want to give it that extra little layer of protection uh, before I close this thing back up because really once I close this back up again um, you know right now if I leave it like this that kind of voids the whole explosion proof part of it because there will technically be a leak that can go through here um, but once I have it put back together and it's running the way I would like it to be and the bearings sound quiet then I'll probably put some kind of material back in here again to seal this um, but yeah so everything it's pretty cool the uh one thing I found kind of interesting with this is how long this shoulder is here, uh, how deep that comes out. That's about three-eighths of an inch. Uh, a lot of motors usually are not quite that deep, maybe an eighth of an inch or sometimes even a little less. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I guess they made that longer so that it has more surface to seal against the inside of this lip and... Uh, and really make a nice tight seal so you don't get any leakage through there. So that is the ILG with the General Electric Explosion Proof motor. All right, so I have a little setup going here. I'm warming up this motor uh, with a lower voltage AC current. Um, what I've done is I've taken this transformer, which is a uh, 120 volt. Normally, this is configured to have a 240 or 480 volt primary and a 120 volt secondary. What I'm doing is putting 120 volts into the 480 configuration on this side and on this side I get about 30 volts coming out. Um, and right now the motor is drawing 2.02 amps but that's at 30 volts. So to get the 120 volt current on this 
you got to divide that by four so you know looking at about a half an amp at 120 volts and I know that that's true because if I look here we're drawing 0.53 amps from the 120 volt wall outlet so I'm checking this I have one of these little uh, handheld thermometers here and yeah, we're slowly rising it started at 70 degrees I checked it a couple minutes ago it was at 73 now we're at 78.4 so once this gets warm enough I'm going to uh, spray some new varnish on it just to make sure that everything is nice and sealed up and after that uh, once it cools and everything the varnish all hardens this motor should be good for a long time uh, I'm going to be putting new bearings in it and once it's all sealed back together I'm sure this will have plenty of years of trouble free life till its next service job all right so i got a little bit of progress here um, as you can see all of the parts are disassembled uh, i still haven't gotten to doing the paint work i will do that after i get the motor taken care of uh, i'll go through and kind of shine up this paint with some automotive compound and uh, wax but for now, uh, you can see here, I have applied new varnish to the windings, and I have baked that in. I also applied some heat shrink tubing to the leads. They didn't really lead it entirely. They weren't super bad, but um, I did want to prevent them from getting worse. You can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but they're, they're a cloth-covered, you know, old braided uh, cloth-covered conductor so um, I wanted to prevent that from cracking or splitting or getting any worse than it was um, the rotor is nice and clean I uh, I took these springs off the uh, centrifugal switch and I used an ultrasonic cleaner and I really all I had to do was just dunk them into the water for a second and all this kind of powdery substance came off of it and then I just, um, I applied a little bit of oil to the surface of the springs and they look really nice and like they're brand new. There's not one little bit of rust on them. These are brass flyweights that, see that goes in and out. Um, and of course I've removed the bearings, which I'll get to those in a second. This piece is aluminum and the aluminum was kind of cruddy and covered with a lot of oxidation uh, the inside was actually like, you know, dissim dissimilar metals. Uh, we had some corrosion here and, uh, it was hard to get this off when I first cracked it open, but now it will fit on here and you can rotate it around like it's supposed to be able to. Um, so that's good. The end bells are nice and cleaned out now. Um, you see that's where the bearing, the rear bearing goes. The front one, got that little slot at the bottom for the mechanical seal that it has. Um, but they're all cleaned up now. This is just like a insulator that goes between the end bell and the uh, centrifugal switch. And then we have the bearings and shims and all kinds of different stuff here. So this is for the front. These pieces all press on. And then the rear which actually has two disc springs, if I can show them, here they are. So these are disc springs, there's two of them that are identical, they're stacked on top of each other. And then there's also, I think, two thin shims that go behind that. And that all goes behind the rear bearing. Now, I did clean these bearings, and um, they are completely dirt free, and they do, one of them spins really nice, the other one has a little bit of a crunchiness to it, and it doesn't actually feel like it's the bearing itself. It feels like it might be the metal shield, something to do with this rubbing against either the inside race or maybe the uh, the carrier on the inside of there. Something every now and then kind of rubs a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace them with some new bearings, um, but of course I will hold on to these just... I generally hold on to the old bearings after I clean them up. Never know, maybe I might need them in a pinch one day. Um, 
But yeah, so this thing's coming together pretty nice. Uh, once the bearings arrive and I can press all the new bearings, I will be able to put this motor back together and give it a run test and see if it sounds any smoother than it did the last time that it ran. Alright, so here's the motor back together after a fresh rebuild and I'm going to give it a start. No more bearing noise. probably faintly hear the centrifugal switch. Very faintly, it's quiet. Very nice. I like it. Okay, so after giving this a fresh rebuild, uh, here's the results. It's nice and smooth though. That little bit of noise you might hear is from the centrifugal switch um, rubbing against its own contacts, the, well the contact points where the little throw out bushing on that touches the actual switch mechanism. So it's not too bad though, it's definitely a load better than it was. Uh, what I'll do is I'll turn it to the side get a front view of it and make sure we're in frame and here we go it is so much nicer I can like the that thing is there right here one for another 70, 80 years. All right, thanks for watching.